everybody, let's start off by putting some Liquid Original on our canvas. This is the medium that I like to use for my fast drying medium and I will be mixing it with my color today. The color that I'm going to be using is the Windsor and Newton Burnt Umber. As you can see here, this is what I like to use for all my underpaintings unless I'm doing a black and white oil painting. I'm just going to put some here on my canvas and I will be mixing this with the Liquid Original. I thought I'd show you guys how much I actually put into the paint because I haven't showed that to you guys before. So let me just grab a palette knife and this is the palette knife that I use and I'm just going to grab a little bit here from the Liquid Original and just start mixing. It's going to be you know a lot softer consistency um, almost, you know, kind of like a, a cream, I guess you could say, as you can see here, it's got a nice shine to it, but I did not use everything. Now this is the brush that I'm going to be using to apply it to the canvas. And it's a Filbert number nine. I'm just going to take a little bit off of the palette there. And as you can see here, there's quite a bit on the brush. And I always like to start over in the corner just because it can be a little dark. And this is how you kind of gauge if you have enough of the Liquid Original in the painting or in the paint. Um, if it's too dark and you start to lose those lines that you had just sketched out, then it's too much and you need to add a little bit more of the liquid. Now I'm going to, um, I'm going to apply this to the entirety of the canvas and making sure to pay attention when I start to hit those lines and I'll start at the corners and then work my way in without adding any extra paint to the brush until I actually need it. And as you can see here, there's hardly anything on my brush. I can still see the sketch underneath. Now I will need to add a little bit more. My brush is getting pretty dry at this point. Um, there's not hardly any paint on it, so I went in, got me some more paint. And as you can see, it's really dark when you first put it on. So you want to blend inward towards your sketch so you don't lose it. And I'm just going to continue to do this process and cover the entire painting. And there wasn't quite enough on there, so I went ahead and dipped back into the Liquid Original before I started putting over the actual um, sketch part there. And I'm going to speed through this part and I'm going to apply it over the entire canvas, like I said, and just get all that covered really well. You know, try to fill in as much of the toots of the canvas as you can and make sure that everything is a nice, smooth, even consistency. Now I like to grab a paper towel and I will take this over the entirety of the canvas and just smooth it out, just so it's nice and even. And I can, as you can see, I can still see my sketch underneath, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. And now we are ready to start pulling out the colors. And to do this, I like to use a paper towel. So I grab a paper towel and I start to pull out the big shapes that I see in the dog. And as you can see here in the reference photo, This, there's quite a bit of light coming in on the dogs here. Now I really want to make sure that I, that I capture that, but I am just looking for those bigger shapes at the moment. And I will work my way, you know, I like to work from left to right. And that way I can make sure that I don't really miss anything. So let's zoom in here and I can show you a little bit better here. There is a very bright highlight here on the top of the 
dog's head. And you know, to, to get this, I'm just looking at the shapes. I'm trying to cover, you know, as much as I can. I like to start big and then work my way to using smaller tools, whether it is a Q-tip or a brush. But you know, let's start off with, let's get the biggest parts done first because we are using a liquid original and it dries within a couple of hours. Well, not really dries, but it starts to get tacky within a couple of hours. And once that happens, you don't want to be painting anymore. You have to let it dry. All right, so now I'm going to get me some q-tips i had to grab those real fast and this is where i'm going to start getting um, the smaller tools out and i'm going to start pulling out those colors a q-tip it pulls out a little bit more than the paper towel does so i will start to get you know the, the brighter areas that didn't get quite bright enough i'll start to pull those out with a q-tip and i will work my way down the same way that i did with the paper towel but a little bit more precise now And I always like to do the highlights first before I do the darks. It's just a personal preference. If you would prefer to do the darks first, then do the darks first. But for me, I like to do the highlights first. I think that it's easier that way, but it's personal preference. Now there is a really big highlight here on the dog's body. So, you know, I grabbed my paper towel, got that back out and started pulling out the, the paint again. And then to get a brighter highlight, I went back to the Q-tip. And I will just continue to do this process for pulling out my lights until I'm satisfied with what it looks like. All right, now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and I am using a number two flat here. And this is what I'm going to use to be pulling out the colors. I haven't showed you guys this either, I don't believe. And I just dip it straight into the liquid original and pat off any excess on the canvas and then I blot it on a paper towel because you don't wanna to have too much. A little bit goes a long way with this stuff. So here I'm gonna show you in the dog's eye, I'm gonna start pulling out that highlight. And you can see how much it pulls away just by barely tapping it. And you might have to go over it a few times, you know, tap some of the paint off and then wipe it off with your paper towel and then go back over it again. But it's a great tool to use to get in the smaller details and things like the eyes. It gives you a very nice sharp edge if you're looking for that. I wanted to show you something here. Now I did put a little bit more liquid onto the brush, a little more than usual. And I'm really scrubbing it into the teeth of the canvas. And then I'm gonna come in with a Q-tip and wipe away any excess of that. And what that's gonna do is it's going to blend it out really nicely and you're not gonna have a big glop of liquid original on there. And it helps to, to get those a little bit brighter as you wipe it off. Now I'm gonna move on down to the nose here and I'm gonna to continue to do the same thing. I'm grabbing my Q-tip here and I'm going back in again and just pulling out any of the areas that I feel like aren't quite bright enough. Mm -hmm. 
and I would just continue to go back and forth between a paper towel, Q-tip, and a brush. Now I'm going to switch now to a number four flat. I like to use a lot of flats, flat brushes when I am doing um, animal portraits. I find that it, it just makes it easier to get the hair texture that I'm looking for. Now, now that I have the entire canvas covered with liquid original, I don't want to add any more. So I'm going to get some more of the burnt umber with nothing in it and I'm going to put my brush into that. I don't want to add any more. If I do, it's going to dilute the color and I don't want to dilute the color because now I want to start working on my darks. I'm really happy with how my highlights are and I'm just going to work my way around the canvas and putting in any of those darks that I see in the painting or in the picture. Now I'm gonna just speed this up here and I'm gonna let you guys just see the process. You know, it's pretty straightforward. I add darks where the darks need to be and I add lights where the lights need to be. If I start to notice as I put in the darks that something isn't light enough, then I will go back in and pull out those colors again but it is simply just going back and forth. Um, this is a style that I actually learned from doing a pet portrait course from Marion Dutton of uh, Mozart Studio. Um, she has a wonderful course, so if you haven't checked out her course, you should. She's a wonderful artist here on YouTube, um, and her techniques are amazing. So if you haven't checked her out, then you should do that. But um, this is something that I learned through her course and her techniques. And you know, I've, I've been doing them now for about a year using her techniques and they are amazing. They make painting so easy. So if you haven't checked out her channel, then you know, make sure that you do so. But this is just the process that I like to go through, you know, step by step of putting the, covering the painting with the underpainting color of what I like to use, which is burnt umber. And then you simply are just going to be pulling out your lights and then you're going to be putting in your darks because whenever you put that base tone of the burnt umber, that's your middle tone. So just keep that in mind and then, you know, add your darks and add your lights and make sure that you're really paying attention to where your light source is coming from. Now I will be in the next video starting to add the color. So I hope that you guys um, will come back and see that process. It, you, these dogs, they're black and white, so um, I'm trying to decide right now, actually on the background, I'm kind of leaning more toward like a bluish gray, so I guess we'll see in the next video. So um, if you guys haven't already, please check out my playlist that I have. I have tons of speed paintings and some more in-depth animal paintings too that you could check out that show my step-by-step my -step process. I do do things a little bit differently um, than other artists in the way and the steps that I go about doing things. So, um, you know, if you like what you're seeing, then please consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next video. Enjoy!